All right, so let's continue forward with our uh, little tile map project here, and uh, obviously just using the same art as before. Uh, one really cool feature that you can add in here is, uh, let's just select one of our center tiles. Okay, this is already selected. And from uh, this panel over here, so click on the uh, attributes inspector. There we go, good reminder to turn that off. We, uh, we can add in some user data, okay? So just click on the plus sign. Uh, you can make this uh, float, bool, string, whatever you want. Uh, let's make it a Boolean uh, variable. We'll say is center, okay? I'm just gonna copy that. And one is gonna make that uh, basically have a yes value. And then we can go through here and do the same thing through our var for the variance as well. And uh, it's nice that you can do that because obviously, if you had a variant for something, you might want to treat it a little bit differently. Perhaps uh, you know, if it was the uh, the cactus one, the the player would get injured, uh, you know, walking across it. And uh, what we'll end up doing is uh, we're not going to add a player or anything like that. But um, I'll show you guys how to at least uh, basically test the touchdown location of your finger and um, you know get some feedback uh, based on what tile uh, you have uh, pressed or whether or not it was a tile at all. Now one big thing is after you've done all this, uh, at least actually in the last time I tested this with beta 5, I'm actually up to beta 6, uh, the, you would have to delete out uh, your existing tile map, okay? So what you'd already painted uh, you'd have to basically undo that, okay? And uh, again, I haven't actually tested that in beta 6. I would kind of assume that's still the case. Um, sort of one of those maybe bugs that they probably wouldn't pick up on for a while, but uh, hopefully they get it fixed soon. So again, I'm just gonna go through here and uh, to get rid of that. So we're gonna make a new tile map from scratch. And if you did just start with that video, this video, you'll probably you know be interested to see that anyway. All right, so let's go over here and uh, find uh, a new tile map to put on. All right, so just gonna drop that guy over here. It doesn't really matter where we put it. Uh, let's go ahead and give it a name though, and we're gonna call this uh, Rock Tiles. I'm gonna set the Z position up to one because in a moment I'll add in another tile map for uh, the, uh, the water background. And uh, let's go ahead and dive into this guy. So I'm just double clicking inside of there. I don't really need to see uh, all this, so let's get rid of it. There we go. And yes, let's begin uh, painting. So I'm gonna select uh, my eight-way rock. And uh, to do that, you do have to have enable auto mapping on. So grab this tool. Oh, looks like I gotta get double. Oh, let's try going back a second here. All right, try it again. Okay, there it goes. And you can see, doo -doo 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 -doo, paint it along here. You know, it's interesting. I feel like as opposed to the last time I tested this, I'm seeing the uh, cactus come in at about five times less as my other rocks because I, I thought before I was seeing too many cactuses. So that looks like something that's been patched up. All right, uh, now that we've got that in there, again, let's um, let's get back over here to the scene. We're gonna drag in another tile map node. Just gonna put this guy right on top of the uh, the other one. Maybe we should just set the, uh, the positions for both of these at uh, zero, zero. That would make sense, right? Okay, well. Having trouble selecting that. That's an, uh, that's interesting. Can I just type it in? All right, maybe we won't. Uh, hey, it's beta for a reason. All right, well, let's just go to this over to this guy. We'll kind of, uh, there we go. That's close enough. And I'm just going to type in here water tiles. So you can see both of the names. I got rock tiles, water tiles. And again, this one is at a Z position of zero. So if I uh, double click into this, hopefully what I should see is, uh, and it looks like I'm in my. There we go. Let me try to. Might have a tough time selecting it. I'm trying to double click in, since it is right on top of the other one. Uh, you know what? Let's just do this. We'll just take the rock tiles, move them off to the side for a second. There we go. It gives me an opportunity to double click on there, and then uh, let's go over here to the water tiles panel. And since I'm just gonna make this all water, uh, let's just use a flood fill. You can see there it goes. And head back over this way and uh, unnecessarily move my rock tiles back over there. All right, so uh, now we should be at a point where we can actually begin adding some code in here. And just to be sure everything is working right, let's go ahead and save that file up. Oh, spinning wheel of death. Is it going to crash for me? Let's find out. No, it didn't crash, but it um, oddly enough showed me. Okay, well, let's pause the video and <laughs> make <laughs> what I had before. Okay, so it looks like the sub lesson there is uh, always save your SKS files before going over your code. All right, now, 
Uh, what I've done is cleared out the uh, game scene.twif file, and I had a little bit more clearing to do there. So we've just got our did move to view statement, our touchdown um, function, which is actually just kind of left over from, again, just from the template. You can see what they do here is uh, they have a touches began statement, and then for whatever reason, they decided it would be clever to basically just take the touch location and pass it into a uh, separate function and they're uh, just passing into this the CG point value so essentially wherever you touch down um, you know you could you'll end up in this function and we could print out maybe you know print and uh, just POS and that would give you the, the CG point value of wherever you touch down we'll end up using that but um, that just gives you an idea of what we're working with and we're not going to really uh, use the update statement so let's come over here and uh, declare our uh, rock map rock map uh, tile uh, so we can use it uh, throughout any of our functions so we're going to come over here and write uh, var and this is just going to be rock tile map nodes obviously a name of our choosing and there's going to be an sk tile map node and we're just going to initially initialize this it's kind of empty essentially just it's um, hey that's what it is sk tile map node and then um, we will associate it with the actual node named uh, rock tiles in just a moment if you wanted you could uh, put in here your water as well so that would look like water tile map node and so on all right so in our did uh, move to view statement let's uh, iterate through all of the children in the scenes we're going to say for uh, node in self dot children and we're just going to put in here if node dot name equals rock tiles keep in mind that's the name that we gave it uh, then we're going to do something uh, yeah, slightly a little bit dangerous here you can say uh, rock tile map node equals node as and you're forcing it to be an sk tile map node so if you had something else in the scene that just happened to also be named rock tiles uh, this would end up uh, crashing you but uh, we're fairly confident that uh, we're not going to do that right very simple project so uh, then we're going to put in here uh, else if node.name equals water tiles then we're going to say that our water tile map node is going to equal that node as SK tile map node. If you kind of just want to see that, uh, you know, prove that this is actually working, you can build it right now. Uh, otherwise, if you don't see any uh, problems with it, let's go ahead and just um, come on down outside of that uh, for statement, and let's just uh, let's just play, play around. We'll say print and then uh, rock tile map node just to get an idea of you know, hey, what, what are you going to see if you print that out, right? Uh, and then let's do the same thing. So let's do a few of these print statements, and we're going to put in here number of columns. Close off that. In fact, let's just take this whole line. So you can get the number of columns in your uh, tile map. Number of rows would be another option. Uh, you can go and write in here print. Uh, let's say rock tile map node dot tile definition at column one and row one okay and let's see what each one of these does uh, that uh, last one there's probably gonna uh, print out nil because I don't actually think that we drew in a uh, tile at that at that specific spot if uh, if we had a tile there it, it would uh, give us some d information on that okay so yep you can see that we've got uh, 24 and 24 so we, the, that's the number of columns and number of rows and if you want to verify that you could go and you know Go back to your scene editor. Uh, and then here is our, uh, just the main, this is what got printed out with rock tile map node. So it's giving us uh, the position, scale, accumulated frame. It's kind of cool actually. Uh, and then again, yes, our tile definition is nil. So let's, uh, let's kind of force a little bit of a different value out of that. And uh, to be honest, I, I kind of can't remember right now if uh, where it starts tracking one, you know, the, the one one position of all this. It might even this might even be zero zero. But um, what we'll do is uh, let's just take our rock eight way. Let's just fill in the corners. I'm sure it's not one of these two over here. We're not going right to left. But uh, one of them should now uh, be that uh, one and one position. And uh, 
Let's uh, let's take a look at what it says. All right, so we got 24 and 24, and then it says optional SK tile definition. So it's really not telling us that much. It's not giving us any feedback on the texture or anything like that. But uh, that is going to be our next little mission here. So let's go back over here to our game scene.swift file. And you know what? I probably I didn't save that. So let's go back and just see what happened. I'm just curious at this point. I bet you those tiles are. Oh, no, they actually are there that time. All right, well, that's a good sign. Okay, so back over here to the game scene.swift file. Uh, let's do this. Let's put in here a let sum tile, and this is going to equal rock tile map node dot tile definition. And again, we're just doing at column row. And then from here, let's print out sum tile. And remember, this is optional because it might not be there. Uh, and that's actually supposed to be dot textures. There we go, dot textures. And this time, let's see what we get out of it. One of the things we get out of it, oh, no, went away. I thought it was going to give me a little warning for some reason. Okay, optional, and then SK texture. All right, that's a good sign. It's telling us center. It's actually even even giving us the, uh, the size of that texture. Remember, it's 128 by 128. And uh, yeah, all right, so, you know, in case you're kind of curious, uh, all of this is just kind of in case you're curious. Uh, now what we'll do is uh, let's iterate through all of the tiles uh, in that map and get some uh, kind of basic feedback on them. So we're going to say for call in uh, zero dot dot. Sorry, let's do this. So we're going to start um, this column variable at zero, and then we are going to iterate to, or, or basically just uh, increment this upwards for as many of these rock tile map nodes that we have in, oops, our number of columns. Okay, and at the same time, so go ahead and close off that. We're gonna do the same thing for all of our rows. So in this case, let's go through four row uh, in zero, and uh, obviously this time around, we're gonna go number of rows, and again, close it off. If you wanted uh, to, let's see, well, put it this way. If we incremented another variable for as many times as we went through this iteration, we would end up with exactly 24 times 24. Okay, so just to kind of prove that it uh, goes through each one of them, but we don't really need to do that. Take my word for it. Uh, and then inside of here, what we're gonna do is say, uh, let's tile definition. And this is going to equal rock tile map node dot tile definition. And then you just put in here your call, your column variable, your row. And now what you can test is if tile definition equals nil, well, guess what happened? Print no tile here. All right, so we'll get that about you know half as many of the times because we've probably only filled in about half of the tiles on our uh, rock tile map node. And then uh, again, we can just print out, just wanna see the opposite tile here, right? Okay, so we're gonna end up with a, a lot of uh, print statements, right? Okay, so you can see, kind of scroll up here, no tile here, tile here, and so on uh, like that. Now. What we can do is inside of this else statement, because remember that's where we actually have a tile, say uh, tile, or just write let tile bool data. And then we're gonna put in here tile definition. Remember that uh, it considers that optional, because uh, it might not be there. Uh, user data, again, optional, because it might not be there. Uh, followed by the name of that uh, user data that we entered earlier. So what did I put for that is center. I think that's what I had as pool. And then we'll, we can say if tile pool data equals true, then print out found a center tile. Okay, and uh, let's run it again. And I'm questioning whether or not I had the right variable name in there. Well, guess what? Good news on two fronts. <laughs> Actually, I for some weird reason, it uh, 
Last time I did this, it didn't save the uh, is center uh, data. So I had to go through there and put it back in, right, is center. Uh, but it turns out that I don't actually have to redraw the uh, the tile map now. So if you're watching this from uh, beta 6 on up, <clears throat> and I'm assuming that uh, it will persist through other versions, uh, you don't actually have to redraw the, the tile map. Woo, isn't that nice? That uh, would have been crazy if you, if you had to. So uh, somebody found that bug and told Apple, and they listened. That's great. All right, so and you can see now found a center tile uh, is in here. So uh, what we could do now is um, test the, uh, the the touchdown location, and uh, let's go over here to um, well we, we've actually already got uh, most of that in here. Let's go to the uh, the actual touchdown, right? And uh, what we can do is pretty similar to what we've already got. We'll say uh, let uh, column. This is going to equal a rock tile map node dot column index tile column index all right from position and uh, again we're already passing in the cg point value of wherever you touch down so we just put in here uh, pos all right and that's going to give you uh, the column number for on the on the map of wherever you touch down that's a, what you would call one of them convenient functions right something made just for us game devs well as is all this stuff right uh, from position uh, POS so that's where we get the uh, column in the row and as we know from what we did earlier getting the column in the row is pretty much essential so we're gonna say if let uh, and then we'll just make a tile uh, out of the, where we press down so we're gonna say SK tile uh, definition and if I spell that right it should there we go tile definition and this is gonna be rock tile map node dot tile definition at column and obviously that's going to be where we repeat back our column and our row okay and uh, this is an if let statement all right so basically if uh, if we can't do anything uh, if we can't make a tile out of that it just gets uh, skipped and what we can do now is again test to see if Let's see, let's just throw in here. And if you wanted to, you could actually put in here, make this an if let statement as well. So you can say if let uh, tile bool data equals, and in this case, we just do tile dot user data. And actually, there's a little slightly different way you can write this dot value for key and that was is center and you can put in here bool okay so let's uh, make sure we got all that right I feel like I'm missing a parentheses in here yeah well I just got too much of a too much of a good thing is what's going on there we go so if let uh, tile bool data equals tile dot user data the value for key is center, and if uh, that passes, you could then say if um, your tile pool data equals true. You can kind of see too that you don't even really need to test if it's true or false. So, for example, with my you know center one there, I could have just said is center. It doesn't matter if it's true or false, right? Because uh, me putting in that that uh, user data kind of implies that yeah that I, I meant that to be this the center one so anyway but uh, just for our purposes we'll put in here print and then touched a center rock okay and uh, yeah let's uh, let's go with that let's see what happens oh and you know what too I was thinking what we might want to do is even test to see or put in an else statement in here um, it's right here else print touched a spot but no tile All right. okay so let's uh, let's see if that works golly I hope it does <laughs> all right so I click over here touch the spot with no tile I'm gonna click over on 
this one. Now you'll notice my edges, I'm not getting anything over here because remember they aren't a center tile and they aren't a non-existent tile. Now if I click over here, touch a center rock, obviously that's what we want to see and that about actually does it for uh, what I wanted to teach of this lesson. But, you know, if you want to kind of let your mind, you know, wander what else you could do with this, I, you know, I mean, I'm sure we can figure out a way later to, uh, to maybe delete a tile that's in here. I don't know. I mean, if you're just trying to make some sort of touch game. Um, but uh, or, or also to maybe <laughs> obviously make a tile, you know, as you touch down so you can kind of draw like a little path for a character to walk on. Uh, so anyway, there's all sorts of cool stuff uh, that uh, you know could be implied uh, from just this very simple setup. Okay, that uh, again, that'll do it for right now. Can I scan down here if you want to take one last little look at, look at the code?